1970s sitcoms varied heavily in terms of content and style. You had nostalgic throwbacks like Laverne and Shirley in Happy Days, and then you had sitcoms not afraid to show a little more teeth by pushing the boundaries and taking on interesting social issues like racism, sexism, equal rights, and economic disparity. But one thing was very clear. The 70s was a decade of significant change. This wasn't your father's television anymore. Sure, shows like Father Knows Best and Leave It to Beaver might have spoken to the previous generation, but the hip culture crusaders of the 70s wanted to see something fresh and new on their color television sets. Much has changed in the 40-plus years that have transpired since the 70s came to a close, and seeing as how we're currently living in the so-called information age, a ton of secrets related to the stars of this decade's classic sitcoms have come to light in recent years. Join Facts First as we reveal some of the most intriguing secrets these stars weren't able to cover up. All in the Family's Gene Stapleton was an excellent singer. Gene Stapleton won three Emmys for playing Archie Bunker's loyal, sweet-natured, and hopelessly optimistic wife, Edith Bunker. Stapleton's addition to the show's cast was a huge reason why the series was such a success. And when Edith was killed off after Stapleton asked to be written out of the spin-off series, Archie Bunker's Place, her devoted fan base was devastated. The opening credit sequence for All in the Family features a duet of the song Those Were the Days, sung by Edith and Archie. It's widely considered to be one of the most iconic opening theme songs in the history history of TV. But there's a pretty big secret about Edith's singing voice you might not know. Although Edith had a pretty lousy singing voice, in reality, the actress who played her was quite musically gifted. Stapleton was the daughter of an opera singer and had received formal vocal training in her early years. Some of her first appearances as an actress were in stage musicals like Funny Girl, Damn Yankees, and Bells Are Ringing, both on and off Broadway. Red Fox was just 48 when he was cast as a 65-year-old. Based on the British sitcom Steptoe and Son, Sanford and Son is considered by many to be NBC's definitive answer to CBS's enormously popular sitcom All in the Family. Both series focused on working-class, middle-aged, curmudgeonly bigots who are constantly at odds with their younger, liberal family members. While the sitcom is known for featuring a primarily African-American cast, its producers didn't go into it knowing they would ultimately be working with black talent. According to series co-creator Bud Yorkin, they initially had considered an Italian or Jewish cast before agreeing on featuring a black family, after screen testing dozens of actors and actresses. After Yorkin saw Cotton Comes to Harlem, however, he knew Red Fox was the lead he'd been looking for. When the pilot was being cast, Fox was only 48, even though the father in the show's script was supposed to be 65. But given Fox's lifestyle, appearance, and mannerisms, the age discrepancy was nothing more than a minor issue. He was already gray and walked the same way you see on screen, and his voice had been coarsened from years of of smoking, drug use, and heavy drinking. When Fox was cast, he'd been doing stand-up while developing a cooking show. When he was told by Yorkin about the pilot, however, he was very excited about the opportunity and quickly dropped everything. He was so gung-ho, he reportedly told Yorkin he would gladly, quote, take his teeth out if he wanted him to. Before we tell you more about 70s secrets, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Isabel Sanford was surprised by her Jefferson's husband's height. The Jeffersons, a spinoff of All in the Family, was one of the first sitcoms to feature a well-off black couple. The show was created by television legend Norman Lear, who wrote the part of George Jefferson specifically with Sherman Hemsley in mind. But since he had been away doing a Broadway show when Isabel Sanford was cast to play his wife, she didn't get a chance to meet Hemsley until she'd already played Louise Jefferson on several episodes of All in the Family. When she met him, she was expecting a much larger man. Hemsley was rather short at 5'6", so when Isabel laid her eyes on him, her first reaction was he was so small she could have squashed him like a bug. Bob Newhart insisted his character be childless. Newhart was already a successful stand-up comic touring with his act around the country when he was approached with the opportunity to turn his comedy into a TV sitcom. The Bob Newhart show centered around his character, Robert Hartley's work as a clinical psychologist in addition to his home life. Hartley was married to his wife, Emily, played by actress Suzanne Plachette. Emily was an intelligent and independent woman who had a life of her own. She and Robert had no children, which was a break from how most other sitcom families were presented years prior. As it turns out, this decision 
decision not to feature children was intentional. Newhart insisted his character not have kids because he didn't want to be seen as just another sitcom dad who was always playing the idiot. That trope, in his eyes, had long been played out. Christopher Lloyd came up with Reverend Jim's signature distant look on Taxi, drawing from his brother's facial expressions. Even though the ever-stoned street preacher cabbie driver Reverend Jim didn't become a series regular until Taxi's second season, he quickly became a fan favorite. When Christopher Lloyd auditioned for the role, he hadn't bathed in days and intentionally didn't shave that morning. He came in wearing an old denim jacket from the 60s that a buddy of his had found in a bush. When coming up with Reverend Jim's trademark distant look, Lloyd modeled his expression after his brother's. Whenever he would come back from a break and find himself out of his groove, he would simply picture his brother's face in his mind's eye and suddenly be back in a character. Suzanne Somers' side ponytail was covering a bald spot. Summers rose to fame playing ditzy blonde Chrissy on Three's Company. One of her character's most distinct physical features was her signature side ponytail. But as it turns out, that wasn't a deliberate choice on her part. In truth, it had been conceived as a way of covering up a hairdressing accident that left her with a rather embarrassing bald spot. As the story goes, her hairdresser had been distracted while working on her roots. She was on the phone talking to one of her other clients, Rod Stewart, when she accidentally clipped off a huge chunk of Summers' hair. Since she had a show that evening, Suzanne adopted the side ponytail style as a way of temporarily covering up the bald spot. But it proved to be such a hit with producers of Three's Company, they told her to keep it. Danny DeVito used obscenities at his taxi audition. One of the things that made Taxi such a hit with audiences and critics alike was its strong ensemble cast that included the likes of Danny DeVito as the rough-around-the-edges dispatcher Louie. Louie was a nasty guy who made life downright miserable for everyone around him. He was mean-spirited, rude, and always seemed to be in a terrible mood, although deep down inside he just wanted to be loved. Danny DeVito shined in the role, but in order to land the part, he had to give the show's producers what they were looking for. At his audition, DeVito pulled no punches. After walking through the door with the script in his hand, he looked at the team of producers and said, just one thing I want to know before we start, who wrote this shit? While there was a brief pause, and it seemed as if things could go in either direction, the producers erupted in laughter, and DeVito landed the role. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these 70s secrets was most shocking to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Faxverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99.